Hello, this is Gilles, the Radio Prepper at radioprepper.com. Tonight I saw an excellent video from Peter Parker, VK3YE, uh, not Spider-Man, the uh, Australian QRP guy. And uh, he has uh, a very good point about survival radio. Uh, his video is titled, Ultra Simple Survival Radio, Is It a Scam? I highly suggest that you uh, subscribe to his channel and watch his videos. It's, uh, he has uh, great stuff on there. So I wanted to elaborate on, uh, on his video and uh, add my uh, little grain of salt here. Um, first, I'll say that um, I wouldn't use tiny radios, QRP radios, uh, as a primary means of... Uh, uh, calling for help. Uh, I use a Delorme InReach for that. It's a satellite uh, gizmo and uh, it, it works great. Here is a map of uh, where I used it uh, in the Bahamas uh, before I lost my boat, unfortunately. Um, and it really, uh, it really uh, worked really well. But we're not here to talk about uh, uh, satellite systems. So... Um, also, I wanted to mention um, uh, handheld radios, uh, VHF, UHF, uh, like a lot of preppers uh, use and buy. These radios are really good when you're in a group and you have to uh, talk to uh, members of that group, people who go on patrol or uh, uh, take watches and things like that. Um, but their range is really limited to about uh, just a few miles. So if you need to get uh, information from the outside and contact the outside, uh, it's just not going to work. Um, for that, we need uh, HF radios. Uh, a second observation about uh, what we call radio uh, go boxes. So here's an image of one. Um, I don't know who it's from. There's a name there. But uh, I'm just using this image uh, as an uh, uh, um, example. Uh, it, it's, it looks very well made, and it's probably very good for, uh, I would call it, uh, community emergency radio for a local or you know, semi-regional emergencies. But um, can you carry it? Um, I mean, it's, it's meant to, uh, to be carried in a vehicle. I'm, I'm pretty sure of that. Uh, but uh, who's, who's saying that you, your car is going to be available or is going to work? So I always like to consider the worst possible um, situations. And here's my go box. <laughs> it, it's much, much, much smaller. Um, here's the antenna that I use in that go box. So you can see that it's, uh, I, c I could actually fit everything in uh, uh, one cargo uh, pan pocket. So uh, of course, uh, small, small radios like, like this one, uh, the one in the box you saw is a Weber MTR. We'll talk about uh, that one later. Um, they're Morse code only. Uh, and that uh, that allows them to be uh, to be very small. They are very simple radios. Uh, here's the smallest one that you can probably find. Uh, it's called a Pixie. It's uh, a Chinese radio, and it costs about three dollars. And that's including shipping. Yes, <laughs> it's just incredible. Um, and here uh, it is in a case. It's extremely low power, so. Um, and like uh, uh, Peter Parker was saying, these radios are not frequency agile. Uh, they are crystal controlled. So you're pretty much uh, stuck on one frequency. Also, they are very low power. And I mean, you know, 300, 500 milliwatts. So can you make contact with these radios? Sure, it, it, they work. Uh, they don't have any filtering uh, either. So it's very hard to uh, discern uh, uh, stations, uh, multiple stations, uh, when you're listening. Uh, so to have fun with, uh, great. I mean, I, I love those radios. They're just, when you make a, a thousand mile contact on a <laughs> $3 radio, uh, it, it's, it's just great. 
but would I use one for uh, an emergency radio? No, I would not. Uh, you could be calling all day and, and nobody will get back to you. And not because uh, there are few people listening to uh, uh, you know, Morse code uh, calls. Uh, there are plenty of people using Morse code. Morse code is here to stay, guys. Uh, but uh, you have few chances to make uh, to reach someone, especially if you know you're in a remote area and uh, your antenna is not working great, and uh, maybe your battery is 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 not charged fully. Or uh, I mean, there could be a lot of things, um, and and people might not hear you. You have very little power if the propagation isn't quite perfect. Uh, you're going to be in trouble. So um, we'll move up uh, up the ladder here in uh, QRP radios. Um, the next one is the uh, Rockmite. Here, the one you see on the picture is a Rockmite 30. It's a little bo uh, a little more um, advanced, I would say, than uh, the Pixie. Uh, it, it's still very low power. It's still crystal controlled, so. You can't uh, change the frequency, and I would put it in the same category. Uh, it's a $50 radio. Uh, it, it is better, but um, emergency radio? No, <laughs> still not. Um, the next one, um, here we're starting to get to something uh, interesting. It's called a One Water. It's uh, also a crystal-controlled radio, but it has a... Uh, a VFO, so you can change the frequency a little bit, a few kilohertz. So you are going to be able to browse a little bit around the crystal frequency. Um, not very much, but it's still better than a rock mite or a pixie. Um, the power is also one watt, which in Morse code, uh, CW mode, uh, it's not bad. Um, five watts would be better, I would rather have five watts for emergencies. So would I use the one water for an emergency radio? Mm, almost, but but no. Uh, it's still, um, you still uh, are uh, taking a, a lot of risk there. You could hear someone and, and try to call them, they don't hear you, and, and <laughs> that would be the worst possible thing. Uh, so the next one uh, I built as a kit, it's called a Weber MTR. And that is my uh, pretty much, well, yeah, pretty much my favorite radio. It's uh, three bands, full band coverage. Um, it also has uh, memories, uh, so you can store messages. And that's very important because if you're sending, say, an SOS, uh, you don't want to have to uh, key that message every uh, minute or so, or uh, you know, every, every uh, 10, 20 seconds. Uh, all the time and, and you know and in the meantime you can't do anything else so the Weber MTR has a message memory oh by the way the rock might does too but uh, uh, it depends on the keyer you're using uh, but I think they come with a keyer that has memories now but uh, so the message memory uh, feature is very important because uh, you can uh, key uh, uh, you can record uh, an SOS call and just let it go and put it on repeat mode and it'll just keep on going and keep on transmitting. So uh, you can see here uh, my whole station. So as you can see, it's really small. I mean, I have a, uh, the Weber MTI is on the upper left, uh, next to it, the Goal Zero solar panel. I don't have that panel anymore. It was on my boat, so it's probably on, at the bottom of the uh, Atlantic right now. I don't know. Uh, maybe someone stole it. Uh, who knows? Um, in the middle on the left, uh, there is a little uh, unfed tuner. Uh, unfed wires are very efficient. And uh, that's my favorite type of antenna. Uh, the uh, MTI is powered by eight AA cells. So uh, you can ask yourself, what would you rather carry? Eight AA cells or a car battery? Right. Um, so those small radios are great because they have very low current draw. Uh, maybe, you know, 30, 50 milliamp hour. Uh, it, it, it's nothing. I mean, I've, I've taken my MTR uh, on a uh, trip a couple times, a week long trip uh, camping. And um, 
it was enough i didn't have to recharge the batteries so i mean one set um so they're very uh, very good on uh, on current draw i have a little speaker there the an antenna uh and fed wire with a choke for uh, uh 20 40 and uh 10 meter i think yeah from elena precision i have a little uh american mode uh american morse uh, paddle uh, a bit of a uh uh, RG174 uh, cable and that's it that's all you need uh, that's a whole HF station uh, would I use the MTR as a survival radio yes I would uh, that that would be the first one that I would consider taking with me as a backup to my primary means of uh, of uh, calling for help so um, and again the advantage of these uh, radios all the radios I mentioned so far is the fact that they can use very very small batteries and that you are going to get a lot of use out of those uh, those batteries there are uh, small uh, lipo batteries they're a little bit finicky to charge you have to uh, be careful uh, discharging them because you can destroy them by uh, uh, letting the one cell go below about uh, you know three volts so uh, yeah I kind of prefer AA cells but uh, those are very small uh, especially the the uh, 610 milliamp hour uh, you can see the charger there in the upper left corner a uh, 10 dollar charger so no problem there uh, and the uh, little gizmo on the uh, bottom left is a, uh, a cell voltage monitor that you something you really need uh, and uh, <laughs> i'm kind of ashamed to say that uh, i lost uh, uh, most of those packs because i didn't pay attention um, next, uh, you can see uh, three unfed tuners. Uh, the one on the left is the uh, Illertena, the one in the middle is the Urchi, E A R C H I, uh, Hawaii uh, Ham Radio Club, I think, something like that. It's uh, 921 Unun. The one on the right was, uh, I don't remember, but it, uh, it's no longer made. So uh, if we move up again, we're getting now to the Elecraft K1. Uh, the K1 is also uh, one of my favorite radios. I built uh, this one as a kit. It's uh, two or four bands, although the new ones are only two bands now. Uh, they cost a, a minimum of $300, but uh, it's a great receiver. And uh, it's just a great radio overall, great filtering. I mean, it's just an awesome radio. So uh, even with two bands, uh, still highly suggested, uh, highly recommended. If we move up again, uh, we get to my uh, current QRP radio. Uh, the first one that has a voice mode. So, um, uh, and that's great because uh, as uh, uh, Peter Parker was saying, uh, if you have a radio that has QRP only, well, you probably uh, going, you know, you're probably going to be able to reach someone. I'm, I'm almost convinced of that. Uh, but you know, if you have voice capability on top of it, uh, so much the better. So uh, this one has uh, uh, USB and LSB modes, and uh, it covers all the uh, most uh, popular amateur bands in HF. Actually, uh, all of them, uh, except 160 meter. It doesn't have six meter either, but uh, it stops at uh, 10 meter. But it's a great radio. Uh, here you can see it outside. Uh, when I did the uh, video about the uh, Valley tuner from Sota Beams, um, it's on, yeah, it's on 80 meter right there. I transport it in a Pelican case. And that's a very important thing here because those radios, unfortunately, are, in, are, are not. And none of those I mentioned so far are weatherproof. Uh, so um, you, you need to protect them uh, against uh, the elements. Um, and unfortunately, if you're using them outside while it's raining, you don't have anything to protect the radio, uh, you know. You'd be in trouble. Uh, I can imagine, for instance, being in a, uh, uh, a dinghy or some kind of a uh, life raft and, uh, you know, with waves splashing uh, um, 
you know, on you. And uh, I mean, it's you just couldn't use them in that case. Um, <clears throat> so if you want something that's really, really bomb proof, uh, <laughs> weatherproof, uh, submersible, I mean, anything, uh, you have to go uh, military uh, radios. Uh, and here you can see uh, this one is the uh, PRC320. The PRC320, PRC refers to the uh, the whole station. Um, the transceiver uh, alone is called the uh, RT320. It's a British uh, military transceiver and that thing is just absolutely amazing. I mean, you can, and I'm not kidding, you could run over with a car I could throw it in the river there and, and it wouldn't, you know, it would be fine. Uh, it, it's totally uh, submersible. Um, not not very deep, you know, just a meter probably, but, you know, for like half an hour, I'm not sure. But uh, uh, still, I mean, uh, you know, you could be, uh, like I said, in a life raft uh, with, uh, uh, you know, tons of water uh, in a storm and uh, you could extend that little whip there and... and uh, and place an SOS uh, call for you know call for help and and you know it would it would work uh, you would have no trouble. Um, the uh, problem with um, military radios, military man packs for uh, survival radios, is that uh, you can't really tune like a, like an amateur rig. Uh, you have little knobs and you have to move those knobs to uh, change frequencies. Uh, of course, in the military, uh, you know which frequency you're going to be on. So uh, that's not a problem, but when you have to um, kind of browse a little bit to, uh, to find someone and, and call them, because, you know, you might park yourself on a frequency and uh, try to call for, uh, for help, but if no one tunes on that frequency happens to, uh, to come by, uh, nobody's going to hear you. So um, that's, uh, that's an issue. Um, here you can see the radio on the... Uh, on the river, you know, the Lys River in the north of France. And that's all you need there. You have uh, the whip, which is a 2.5 meter whip. Uh, have a little uh, uh, counterpoise wire that it's, it's uh, dangling down. It's uh, actually in the water. And uh, just have a, um, the ancillary there, the, uh, the microphone, uh, you know, handset. Uh, and and the battery is is clipped on the, the 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 transceiver it's on the left side on the right side so right side of the radio and that's all you need uh, that's it um but still like i said you can't really tune and it's pretty heavy i mean i wouldn't want to carry that with me anywhere really uh, of course in the military you know you have people who are uh, just uh, radio guys and um, that's what they do, and uh, they're also 20 years old, <laughs> and uh, they can carry that, no problem. Um, I wouldn't want to, um, you know. Uh, so, now, really, uh, those, those, all those radios, and there are plenty more, like, uh, you know, the uh, Yesu uh, FT817ND, uh, for instance, uh, is a good candidate for something like that, but all those radios are not really survival radios um, what would be for me an ideal survival radio would be uh, let's say a mixture of the uh, kx2 for instance so it would be a kx2 that is that is as rugged as the rt320 so a kx2 inside a thick cast aluminum case uh, waterproof that would be awesome. I mean, that would be the the the, the top, um, the best um, emergency uh, survival radio you could uh, wish for. But unfortunately, nothing like that, as far as I know, exists on the market. And really, this is it's kind of a call to uh, manufacturers here. It's it's uh, I'm begging you guys, who build radios, uh, to make something like that. Even if it's like a two or three bander, you know, two, three bands, uh, both with uh, SSB and uh, CW, a very simple radio, very rugged, um, that you can take anywhere, that you can bang around, that you can run over with your car, that anything, you know, um, 
something that you can take with you you know is going to work that has low current draw and that uh, you can rely on we don't have that um, I mean even if you buy something like a Kodan you know and you probably would have to spend more than the, the price of your car um, it, it's still not you still can't really tune around and, and, and you know to find people um, so uh, please guys um, I don't know Elecraft or you know I don't know any Chinese manufacturer or um, anybody else make something like that please uh, and, and it's probably would sell like uh, hotcakes uh, but unfortunately we don't have that so um, so ultra simple survival radios is it a scam yes and no <laughs> um, as a primary means of uh, survival yeah it's kind of a scam if someone is trying to sell you a tiny qrp radio as a survival radio uh, for primary survival radio, I would say, uh, you know, maybe not. Uh, I, I wouldn't want to. I want to have something else. At least I want to have two uh, two means of calling for help. Um, and that's just not, not rugged enough, um, in my opinion, you know. Uh, so uh, that's it, guys. Uh, please comment and uh, go to uh, radioprappers.com uh, because I'm going to post that and... Uh, there will be a thread going on, so uh, I'm, I'm really looking forward to you guys uh, commenting and maybe uh, telling me about radios I don't know yet. Uh, that would be of interest to uh, all the preppers. Um, uh, that's it, so thank you very much for your time and I hope to learn a lot from, uh, from you guys uh, because uh, I don't know it all and uh, I just uh, I, I wish we had something like that. We had a, we had an awesome uh, survival radio. Uh, so um, the call is out. <laughs> I hope someone uh, picks it up and uh, does something with it uh, because we, uh, I think we need something like that. And that's it. Thank you very much. Uh, have a good one.